be lifted up. I will, is what he was saying, draw all men. I don't know what you have need of today. I really don't. We all come from different situations and circumstances, but I do have one answer for you today. I promise you, if you will but lift up God today, if we will but lift him up, I believe he will visit that circumstance and situation. For he is bigger and abundant in all of that today. I wonder if today if we could do that. If we could just focus our minds for this next window of time. Because God's going to do a good work. You know, today over in our Pekin campus, we've seen some miraculous things happen and transpire. And I come to the point to realize that only happened because we lifted up God. When we separated ourselves from the situation and circumstance and to realize that God, you are bigger than that. You are above that. You are beyond that. And you care enough to minister unto that. Well, what happened there, I believe, can be transferred over into this place today. If we will but minister unto the need as such as God would have his way in this house. Would we take that time today? Would we lift him up today that he would be glorified in his perfect will would be done in this house? Lord Jesus, I love you today. Father, I magnify you this day. <laughs> I exalt you, O oh, merciful God, in this place. Uh, be exalted, O oh God, I pray, in our midst today. Lord, as we give and yield ourselves to you, would you visit, O oh God, this vineyard. Lord, for you have planted it here. Lord, you have watered it here. You are but sufficient today. We exalt you. We magnify you. God, this window of time, we give to you. We lift you up, O oh magnificent God, that your perfect will would be done. Be exalted in this house. Bless all that is done. All that is said, it is given unto you today that you would be glorified. God, that you would be glorified. God, that you would be glorified and thy kingdom would come. Thy will would be done this day in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
sovereign, you're holy, you're worthy of all my prayer. No matter what it feels like, you're worthy, Jesus. You're faithful, Lord. him right now father we magnify you we exalt you in this place hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah
sanctuary this afternoon you're in the right place you know how i know because the same presence of god is here who is always whenever his children come together i've already been in service this morning already seen god perform several miracles you're watching a miracle on the platform i'm not going to tell it i'll let pastor tell the story of brother mccoy you're watching a miracle right now let your faith start rising brothers and sisters we saw a miracle this morning it's sitting on this platform you'll be able to hear a little bit more about it in just a little bit i'm guessing God is in this place. I'm excited to be a part of it. Let's just give the Lord a worship. Jesus, thank you for your mighty power. Thank you for your miraculous working upon your children. Thank you for showing us your great love and your great favor, for allowing us to be a part of the body of Christ in this exciting revival and harvest time. Lord, bless you as you make, make your way back to your seats. We want to take just a couple of minutes in this service and to honor our Sunday school, our children's ministry. We haven't done this in a couple of seasons now. I remember the last time Brother Lane was here, he shared with us about spiritual authority. And one of the points I'm paraphrasing was if you align yourself and submit yourself with God and the spiritual authority in your life, you can expect that same spirit of God and anointing of God that flows in ministry to flow through you. Imagine as a golden pipe from heaven, as it were coming into a Sunday school classroom, these teachers can minister in that same anointing as long as they stay under that authority. And on a rotational basis, these men and women give of their time, of their resource, of their talents to bless our children. So we appreciate them. And of course, as a director of this whole program, Brother and Sister Clausing, let's give them a special hand clap of appreciation. Vision for children. They're coming up against a lot of obstacles. He has some issues right now in his body but appreciate the work that they're doing and then we're blessed to have a wonderful staff who have an apostolic burden and a love for our children would all of our children's ministers all of our youth all of the college and careers ministers would you please stand up all of our teachers those who are in 
working in those positions. Let's give them a big hand of appreciation. Thank you for the burden you carry, the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. you started a new work in Peak and helping out with that. Appreciate all that you guys are doing. As I mentioned, our children's ministers serve on a rotational basis, and specifically in the Sunday school in the junior church, they keep an aim for excellence where they hold themselves accountable to follow through on some responsibilities. And whenever they gain 80% or higher, we give them a little bit of recognition. All of you deserve it, but these are wonderful folks who, who we've already made this agreement with. And for the spring quarter, please help me congratulate Sister Matthewson and Sister Mounts. I've mentioned to the leadership many times, if there's a real prayer request that I need, this is a wonderful group of people I take it to because God honors faithfulness. And Sunday school teachers, junior church, teens, I'm going to get myself in trouble. All the ministries, whenever you show yourself faithful, God is watching. So we honor you very infrequently. God is watching all the time. Your reward is in heaven, but we do appreciate you. And then for the summer quarter, please help me congratulate Brother Sean and Sister Lisa Adkins. Way to go. Thank you for all that you're doing. We've already given them a small little gift card, just a token of our appreciation, but letting them know thank you for the work that you do to the kingdom. Thank you for the rest of you who are heading into rotations, those of you who are going to get back up to that 80% or higher. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure is the statement. And man, whenever we raise up children in a godly way so they can flow in ministry, oh, there's a blessing, there's an anointing in that. Thank you, every one of you who work with young people. It is a wonderful, worthwhile investment. As the ushers come to receive the tithe and offering, I know of several prayer requests that are needed. I see for the Dave Wallace in the back. Lord bless you. Ask the Lord's blessings upon them. A, a complete healing, a help, a rest today for the clawsing suffering in his body. And I'd like, as we're praying for the Lord to heal his, his kidney stone, help that situation to be remedied. Also to pray for Sister Noni and Brother Dublot. I know Brother John and Sister Carrie Lashley are away right now. They've been ministering to that family. Let's ask God to end up ministering, to touch them. Let's go take these three requests to the Lord as we pray and ask his blessings on the service. Jesus, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of the body of Christ, to enjoy the blessings that come of being part of your body, part of that anointed kingdom of God. And God, we ask you to speak healing into those who are in need today. Thank you for Brother Dave Wallace being able to be with us. But Lord, we ask you to provide everything he has need of today. Be that rest and that peace to him and his wife. Speak healing into his body, we pray. Ask your healing upon Brother Mike Claus and take care of this kidney stone. And Lord, we ask you to minister to the Lot family. Bless Dub and Sister Noni. Let your hand of love be around them. Your peace be upon them. Let your anointing be upon this service, we ask. We've come expecting something from you. And I ask you to show yourself mighty. We ask your blessings on this tithe and offering as we give it back to you with joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I've been so faithful it's not because I've been so good you've always been there for me to provide my every need you were there when I was lonely you were there in all my pain guiding my footsteps you shelter me from rain may my life complete you are to me my everything that is why I can see Jesus my love because you care couldn't imagine if you weren't there. Jesus, I love you because you care. I couldn't imagine. so good you've always been there for me to provide my every need you were there when I was lonely you were there in all my pain guiding my footsteps you sheltered me from rain it was you why I can see Jesus I love you because 
because you care I couldn't imagine if you didn't care Jesus I love you because you care
if you and I could simplify life to the love of God towards us and ours reciprocated back to him it would sure help a lot of our situations because the whole time you were singing that it was focused upon your relationship with Jesus Christ nothing else I'm sure the enemy tried to get in your mind and say yeah but no ifs ands or buts about it God so loved the world God so loved we like to jump right over that and say that he gave his only begotten son but he wouldn't have done that if he hadn't loved you and I and I love him because he first loved us. Have I been perfect? Oh my God, no. My love for God's not, it's not conditioned by my perfection. I love the first verse of that song. Brother Rushing, when you begin to sing that, my heart just leaps. Not because I've been so faithful. Not because I've been so good. Anybody identify with that? But you've always been there for me. Always. You were there. You just fill in the blank. You were there. You just fill it in. Always guided my footsteps. Shielded me. Hallelujah. Can you love him for that? Hasn't God been good to you? I can't imagine where my life would be right now had God not loved me. So Jesus, I love you. And because you care. Couldn't imagine if you weren't there. Jesus, I love you and because you care. Come on, would you just close your eyes and sing it? Come on, could you imagine life without the love of God? Could you imagine going through life without knowing that God loves you and God's got this? Could you imagine going through life based upon your faithfulness? Could you imagine going through life based upon your goodness? I'd have been lost a long time ago. It's not based upon that. It's based upon a relationship. My love relationship with God. And that only happened because he first loved me. Oh, I couldn't imagine. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Would you just lift your hands and sing it as a praise? Oh, I couldn't imagine ah, if you weren't there. Oh, Jesus, I love you because you care. Factor everything else out. I couldn't imagine if you weren't there. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Because you came, I couldn't imagine. Here we go. If you weren't there. Not because I've been so faithful. Not because I've been so good. You've always been there for me to provide my every Yeah. 
separate you from the love of God. It's got to be we who allow things to separate us from that love. If you believe that God loves you, you can face anything. If you'll keep that foremost in your mind. The psalmist said, this I know. God is for me. God is for me. How many of you know God's for you? Thank you, choir, for that song. I it's one of my favorites. I know it's a very simple song. Paul said, who has removed you from the simplicity of Christ? We make this thing so complicated sometimes. We, life's complicated enough. I said, life is complicated enough. Would you just keep that love affair with Jesus Christ open? Listen, God loves you. The only person God doesn't love is the one that won't allow him, that won't receive it. Just let God love you and love him back. Amen. We had a wonderful time this morning in our Pekin campus. Your wrist still feeling good? Praise God. God miraculously touched Sister Rachel this morning, healed her wrist, and uh, several other things that happened. <laughs> I'm telling you, God's incredible. Now, if you told that to somebody in the world, they'd go, what? Really? No. It happens around here so much, we're like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, it's not that we're not grateful, but sometimes I think it's so commonplace, and that may be a good thing. We expect things like that to happen when we pray. Uh, we ought not forget to give God praise and glory. There were several other wonderful things that happened uh, this morning at our Pekin campus, and uh, I don't want to take up too much time. I just I don't know what Brother McCoy is going to do this uh, this afternoon, but we're just going to let God speak to us. We had a wonderful time in prayer last night. Let me tell you that this man is here in the perfect divine will of God. Told me some things that God had on his heart. He said, just tell me if I'm in left field or if I'm. I said, you are spot on. You are the guy that I've been praying for for the last two weeks. Amen. And uh, I believe that God's going to speak to us today. And uh, y'all know he's not me. So just take a deep breath. Roll down the window. And just Relax. 
Relax. Everybody look at your neighbor and tell them, hey, relax. Nature-wise, I'm probably more like the Apostle Peter, sticking my foot in my mouth all the time. Go, 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 go. But this man is just so gentle and sweet and slow. Let me tell you what. He's as slow as Jesus. Anybody got, remember a guy named Jarius? I've got an issue. I've got things going on. Jesus, I need you to hurry up. Jesus, just let him know that I'm not worried about your issue. I'm worried about revelation. Anybody remember a man named Lazarus? God, if you'd have got along with the show, if you had been here, would you just slow down a minute? It's Sunday. This is the Lord's Day. Don't schedule God out. I know what time it is. Could you allow God to do a miracle in somebody else's life and you just be a supporting cast member? Let me tell you, if I had a miracle need in my life, Brother Clousing, I'd want you to stay there and support me until God did it. I promise you, if you had one, I'd be there right there supporting you. So maybe everything's okay in your life today. you got brothers and sisters here today that need a word from God, need a touch from God. Would you just stick around? Oh, I don't mean physically. I mean spiritually, mentally. Would you stay engaged and let God fulfill his will in this place today? Amen. Praise God. Would you lift your hands to heaven and ask God's will to be done? God, open our hearts and our minds. God, as we lift up our spirit to you, give revelation to us, God. Give illumination to our mind to receive the word of God. Speak to our hearts as we break up the fallow ground, as we open our spirit, God. Speak directly into our lives. I ask God, uh, let your spirit become alive within us. Let the mind of Christ, uh, oh God, be quickened within us, I pray. Anoint Brother McCoy. Strengthen his body, God. V uh, bless his Bless him, oh God, in spirit as well as body. And let your will be done in this place today. How many of you like to see the gifts of the Spirit begin to operate in this house? I've already seen them happening once today. I would love to see it happen here on the Peoria campus. Amen. Brother McCoy, come and take your liberty. Lead us to the throne. Amen. Would you give this slow walk and talk and text and a hand clap of appreciation for coming and being with us today? I love you, Brother Lashley. You know, if the Holy Ghost would hit me and I'll start preaching like a house of fire, it mess your introduction all up. <laughs> I love that, man. <laughs> Bishop, you and your wife and the Lord did a good job. <laughs> Praise God. Would you say we love our pastor? We love our, pastor. We love our pastor's wife. Let's just give them a hand of appreciation. I'm going to Romans chapter 9. If I understand correctly, I'm not here to preach a great masterpiece of expounding words, but I'm here as a voice of confirmation. It may be simple, but it's a voice of confirmation. <clears throat> Number one, to those that will identify and know what I'm going to preach about. But you know, I'm there. I've got it. Number two, to 
those that are feeling it but are having difficulty agreeing with it. You're trying, but there's a battle going on to really believe it. Number three, to those that are resisting it. And struggling against it. And there's a lot of people here that fit in one of those categories. There are people here, you know the hand of God's on your life. You agree with it. You're doing your best to walk in it. If I'm correct, there's also represented here that category that is struggling with that call of God or that direction that's the will of God in your life and it's maybe a hit and miss situation and, and you're having some difficulty really getting fully fully committed and if if I'm correct there's also represented here that that is not accepting it so I'd like to address all three the Lord enabling me to be able to bring it to you. It's a voice of confirmation. The pastor did give me this sermon. But he's already preached some of it. He got on it last night. And he got it on, on it today. <clears throat> and he didn't even know. In the mouth of two or three witnesses. And if God is witnessing, not just once, nor twice, but multiple times, you might ought to pay attention and say, yes, Lord. So in Romans chapter, I think it's chapter 9. And I read better without my glasses. Chapter 9, starting with verse 20. Nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay? Of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy? And may God grant that's us, the vessels of mercy. which he hath afore prepared unto glory. Before you got involved with the call of God on your life, God already was working in his kingdom and setting the stage for something that was glorious. Glorious in your life. Something that gave God glory and something that glorified God in your life and through your life struggling with the glory of God even us whom he hath called not of the Jews only but also of the Gentiles praise God let's give the Lord a hand of praise You shake hands with your neighbor and tell them, God bless you today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. Anybody here ever do puzzles? Anybody ever spend some time with grandma? 
I didn't call her grandma, I called her Momo. My brother and our little boys at Momo's house, she, she got us into puzzles. And she even took some cardboard. And my grandmother was quite a, a, a woman believed she could do it. Uh, she just she decided she wanted to brick steps on her front porch, so she got her some brick and mortar and used her little grandson. I don't know if she was doing it to kind of keep me out of trouble or what, but I was kind of her helper a little bit. And she made her own steps out of brick and concrete. She wasn't a brick mason, but she didn't know it. I say she didn't know it. She tried it and did it. She, and so she, just, she took little strips of wood. I don't know where she maybe went and bought them somewhere. I don't know where she got them, but... And she made this cardboard bordered with strips of wood, and you could put the puzzle pieces on it, you know, and you had a border to kind of keep them together. And, and she got us into doing puzzles. And to this day, I enjoy doing puzzles. I, I like to put those pieces together. It's, I like to go through them, turn them all face up, and then find the ones that's got the straight edge. You got to be careful now and then because there's some of them that's almost straight edge. Some of them might be straight edge, but it's not on the border. It, you got to be careful what you're getting nowadays, maybe. But uh, get those straight edges, and then put all of them together, and then and put the color, or the the picture up, so you can see. You know, take the box, turn it up on its edge, and then put the pieces together. And oh, it's fun when you get it all together. It's completed. Every little piece has its own place to go. Sometimes. Those pieces are so similar that you can find one that, well, it, it just, and especially if you got a little one helping you, you know, they, they think it ought to go there. In fact, by the time they're through with it, it's going to go there. You know what I'm talking about? Now, there's a little gap here, you know, it doesn't, it just almost fits. But the color's a little off, but, and, but if you get through the puzzle, then there's another place you're going to have the same thing. Because what had happened is that it didn't really go there. But if you force it there, it'll, it'll go. Now, it won't fit, but it'll go. There's a place that God has designed for you to fit. And sometimes some of us can struggle with that place that God wants us to fit because that place where we fit has several sides to it. It has in it obedience, submission to authority, and to some of us, we wrestle with that submission to authority. Boy, you're quiet. I know what it's like to, did you ever see anybody that they're, you're driving along and they get in the way and they know they're in the way of it because they just turn their head? You can do that with God. Jonah did that. He just turned his head. I'm, no, I'm not going to do it, Lord. Did you know there are people that they will argue with the eternal? There are people that will wrestle with God over a situation. And no, you've missed it, Lord. It's not for me. That, it, no, that's, I don't fit there. But I have designed this to give glory. No, I'm, I'm afraid. And I, it's just not me. I just, I can't handle that. And they go to down to Joppa. And they get down in the belly of the ship. And before you know it, they're in the belly of the whale. And in the belly of the whale, John, he lifted up his voice. God knows how to put you, let me kind of change that. God knows how to allow you to go ahead and get yourself in a stew where you've got to have God's help. Lord, get me out of this place that I have got myself into. Now, I don't know. Like I said, it's confirmation. 
You may not be exactly in that, but you may have been in that before, and you might can say, amen. Most of us probably can. It feels, it feels so good when I've been out of position, and I know I'm out of position, and I'm miserable with being out of position, and I pray through, and God adjusts me. And it fits. Hallelujah. It fits. And it's good. Mm. I'm going to tell you, you don't get that feeling when you're out of position. Yeah, it'll fit there. You just push it. and It might crink up here and, and it might leave a little gap there and the color's off, but I got my way. I did it like I wanted to, and, and sometimes God will let us mess it up. <laughs> my mother had a, uh, they moved to Port Arthur, and my dad, he struggled with going to Port Arthur. Brother Gidros, who was district superintendent, wanted him to take the church there in Port Arthur, and he was pastoring a, a good church. And uh, I am on tape, and this is going across the country. They'd, they'd had some situations of uh, how can I say this? They had some, they'd had some situations through the years with some uh, laity influence. Read between the lines. <laughs> uh, you know, people like power and control, and, and sometimes they'll try to control the ministry. They even, yeah. years before, told a pastor, somebody did, somebody that had become their pastor, we fire him, we hire him, and we fire him. I think it's Brother Pugh they told that to. He stayed there something like 14 years. <laughs> My dad, he... He struggled about going to Port Arthur, and so on the way home one night, having ministered down there, he was by himself driving, and the seat on the passenger side, it's like somebody just sat down. Huh. And the Lord dealt with him, and he went to Port Arthur. God has a plan. God has a will. And you, you, you can struggle. I had evangelized and been classified as an evangelist, and I didn't want to be classified as a pastor again. And uh, there was this little tiny, tiny group of people that it was so small, my brother couldn't, he was the president at the time, he couldn't get a pastor for him. And he wanted me to go there, and I didn't want to be their pastor. I, I told him, I'll go as an evangelist for six months. Well, he talked to them, that was in May of that year, and he signed them up, signed me up through the rest of the year. And uh, three years later, I became their pastor. <laughs> and I, I didn't want to be a pastor again, but there, there was someone that I had confidence in that I've had him to pray for me at times when I needed something from the Lord. And, and uh, I called him one day, and they told me, they had a message for me, and it was, uh, the Lord had given them a message for me. And it was, I have a plan, you know not thereof, or you know not of it, I think it was. And so, that got my attention. Now, I know I'm dragging around now. I'm kind of going slow, but stay with me. And so, I, I, you, you know, that'll get your mind working. God's got, and so would you believe some years later, one day driving to church, I remembered a dream God gave me. And I remember how it fit together with where I was. And I had not realized that this was God, and He'd showed me ahead of time, and I didn't even know how it fit together. But God had a plan, and I really didn't want to 
be where God had a plan for me to be. You know what kind of feeling that gave me? Like I'm in the will of God. There is such a confirmation when you realize I am in God's will. Do you know what it's like when you realize I am out of the will of God? Oh, it can get scary. I know what it's like driving to that place where my mom and dad head up in East Texas, kind of out in the country, and there's some woods around, and I don't know about you, but it's dark around the woods, you can kind of wonder what's out there. But having prayed and in that place of lingering presence from prayer, get out of that car, nobody that I know is around, and have no fear. Because I have been in his direct will. He's there. And I am there in his presence. And I don't have to be afraid of anything. Hallelujah. But I think there's some folks maybe here that's been struggling with God about getting in that place where God wants you to be. Struggling against the Almighty. Can you imagine Moses? Boy, he really tried. He'd been educated in all of the wisdom of the Egyptians, and then he decided he'd step up to the plate, and he got knocked out. I mean bad, and had to flee for his life. Forty years later, now he's got 40 years of experience of hiding in the wilderness. I'm not going back to Egypt. They are wanting to kill me back there. I'm not going. They treated me rough back. They, they were awful back. I'm not going back to Egypt. I'm hiding. I've got a wife now. I've got kids. And, and I'm just comfortable out here just watching these sheep graze. Boy, this, this is really living it up. This is life. I'm just, it's easy. I don't have troubles. I don't have all of that pressure. It, I, I don't want that pressure. I don't want to fake. I just, I want to just take it easy out here and watch these sheep. And all of a sudden, he sees a bush burning. But it doesn't burn up. And he decides he'll step aside and look at this situation. And as he does, God sees he's got his attention. Now, God already had this planned out before Moses was ever born, you know, but Moses didn't know it. And God's got a plan for you, and some of you don't know it. God's got something for you, and some of you are not willing yet for God to fulfill it. But Moses steps up, and a voice speaks to him out of that bush. Moses, Moses, here I am. Take your shoes off. Don't come any closer. Take your shoes off. You're on holy ground. When you come face to face with the Lord, those things that stand between you and the touch of the holy have got to be removed. That shell that you put on that I'm not going to get emotional and I'm not, you're not going to see me act like that. There was a man one time that mocked those Pentecostals. He's country. He'd get on a stump. He'd get into all kind of contortions, making fun of those Pentecostals. Would you believe one day he got the Holy Ghost? Guess how he acted? Yeah. And every time after that, when he'd start getting a blessing, he'd act the same way. I say every time. I don't know. I, no, I'm not. Not me. Moses, take those shoes off. You don't know. And little by little, God began to draw Moses. And it was, it was like they say, you know, pulling that horse. He got, he's got his feet out. We had a cow. I work with cattle some, and they make good illustrations. I can describe to you. Throw that head up, those ears stick out and stare at you. That's, I'm leery of you. I don't know you. I'm afraid of you. It might be. You push me too much, I'll run over you. And just, we had a cow one time. We 
trying to work the cattle and get them into the corral. Well, there was two or three of them that they didn't want to come in. Well, they got all maybe but one in. Anyway, there was one that did, she wasn't coming. And so they finally got her roped down in the field. So I went down there with a cattle trailer to put her in the cattle trailer, get her up there to the corral to work with her. And every time they'd give her slack with that rope, she'd back up. Well, that rope was choking her when she'd pull back. Now, if she'd have just relaxed, she'd have been okay. But no, not her. She wasn't going. And she'd back up. They'd give her slack, and she'd back up. And would you believe before I got her loaded in the cattle trailer, I saw that cow crash and die. Just choked herself, and finally that, old, that heart just gave up, and she died. You know what I did? I went and got a flat trailer, and I got the bobcat and a chain, and I loaded her on it. And my brother took her to the butcher, and the butcher bled her. And it was, soon enough, she bled good. And I ate that hamburger meat. <laughs> and it was good hamburger meat. You know what? They make good illustrations. There's some of you, God's got a plan for you that you're struggling against. If I'm in the will of the Lord and what I have felt to give in this service, some of you, if God's wanting to do something for glory and you can't see it. Now there's some of you, you see it. It's a confirmation to you today. Hallelujah. Understand, I've got it. And I'm going to hold on to it. And I'm going to claim it. And I'm not going to let the devil steal it from me. Oh, hallelujah. And so, Moses, uh, I've heard my people cry down in Egypt. And, and I want to deliver them. Now, God's plan was for one glorious, awesome work. Before it's over with, God's going to rain manna down from heaven. God's going to part the Red Sea. God's going to talk to Moses face to face. It's going to be so great that he's going to come away at least one time with his face shining from the glorious experience. And, and God's going to give him, God's actually going to show him things of heaven. He's going to show him the plan. God's going to talk to him and give him the Ten Commandments written by the finger of God in stone. Moses is a glorious. Now, God didn't tell him all of that at first, but it was in God's plan. And Moses is struggling against the plan of God. Struggling with the eternal. Arguing with God. No, not, not me, God. You, can I paraphrase? Not me. You missed it, Lord. It's not me. Uh, yeah, it's you, Moses. This place fits you. Uh, uh, Lord, they won't believe me. I, he offers these excuses. Did you ever see anybody that, or did you ever offer excuses to what God's wanting you to do? I'm going to tell you what, the excuses can get you in a fix that you regret. They can get you in a place where you didn't witness when God was trying to get you to witness and later on, when you tried and it didn't work right, you regret it the rest of your life. Boy, it can be a lesson to help you the next time to obey the voice of the Lord. Amen. And, and so Moses, they won't believe me. Well, Moses, what's that in your hand? Uh, it's a staff. I use it. I, I use it. I can kind of nudge the sheep with it, and I can use it as a weapon against the wolves and Throw it down, okay? And boy, he turned and ran from it. We had a cow. I'm back to the cattle now. We had a cow, big cow. She was a uh, Charlet type cow, if you know what that is. Big white cow. Probably weighed, she weighed over 1,000 pounds probably. She had a calf, and, and she had some trouble. And so I went down to the field, and, and she wasn't up in the lot. She was down in the field, just open field. And I went down there on a four-wheeler. Maybe it was with some feed. And so I walk out there and I pour out part of the feed from the sack. And then I walk away. So she'll come and get the feed. And she does. She comes and gets the feed. She's eating it up. So I have the bright idea. I'm going to go and pour out some more from that sack. So I go up. Well, sometimes those cows have maternal protection instincts. 
She had a little cat, and she saw me coming, and she charged me. And I did three things. I don't know that I can tell you exactly the order of them, but I turned, and I ran, and I prayed. <laughs> and I imagine that's kind of what, maybe a little bit of what Moses did that day when he threw that staff down, then it became a wiggling snake. He ran from it. And then God tells him, pick it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and would you believe God had him just, you know, come on, step, step, pulling him, pulling him, pulling him. And he, a little closer, a little. And so he did, but he picked it up with a tail. He wasn't brave enough to pick it up with the head. And it turned into staff again. Had him thrust his hand in the bosom, take it out, and it was, it was white like snow with leprosy. The skin had turned white with leprosy. Had him put it back in, took it, and it was like the rest of his flesh. Well, Moses, if you'll show them that first sign, if they don't believe you, show them the second sign. He's arguing with God, and God's answering his arguments. Uh, who am I going to tell him sin? And God said, the first part when I read that reads to me like this, that the first part God gives him is not who he tells them, who he tells him to tell them, send him. It's that God's identifying himself. God says, I am that I am. I, you might say, I am the all sufficient. I don't need anybody to help me. I don't need anybody to hold me up. I don't need anybody. I, I am Sufficient unto myself. Right. Tell them I am sent you. And he also told him to tell them the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob sent you. We need to know who this is. You need to know the voice. He said, my sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger they won't follow. I can call those cattle and they'll listen. I use two ways. Come on, come on, come on. Let's come here. Come on, come on. And there's another yell I use. You! And you can hear them from way down in the pasture sometimes. You know what that means? Food. Food. And it's got them trained. Some of, and I can, I can use that, and there is a herd. I can move from one field to another just using the call or the calls and, and moving with the truck or tractor or whatever. And I've done it. I've moved them from one field to, from one field to another and then back later to the former field. Knowing the voice of the shepherd. You let a stranger go out there they don't know. They might... Be familiar with the call and what it means. But there's times that stranger has not worked with them, and they'll do that deal of some of them will throw that head up and, I don't know you. We need to be familiar with that voice. Now, I know this is going to be broadcast, but there's a minister. Or there's a young man. His dad was a pastor, a close friend of mine. And the hand of God was on his life, and he was struggling against it. He, he, he didn't want to be a preacher. Not him. Mm -mm. Turn it again. Wait and wait. And finally, he accepted to be involved in a ministry. And what he said was, the voice was getting dimmer. And it was getting dimmer. And he didn't want it to go out. And it may be that there's somebody God's been dealing with you and talking with you and encouraging you and trying, and the pastor has tried to talk with you and work with you, and, and that you're just struggling against yourself and struggling against the will of God. And, and could I tell you that what you don't know maybe is that God has a glorious plan, and God's wanting to do something glorious, and God's wanting to build this church and add to this church and God's wanting to multiply souls in the kingdom and God has a place in the puzzle that it is, is designed exactly for your ministry. Whatever it is that you're to fit in, whether it's in the choir or the greeter or the prayer room or Sunday school or 
just praying people through to the Holy Ghost, teaching Bible studies. And no, not me. I, I'm not able, Lord. I, I, I can't even talk. And Moses said that. I'm not eloquent of speech. And God said, who made the tongue anyway? Arguing with the Creator. Arguing with the Almighty. Not me, Lord, I can't. And finally, just balking. Not me, not me. He finally says, God, send who you will. In other words, God, just somebody else. And it, it made God angry. And finally, he let him know, Aaron can speak for you. He's coming. He'll be glad to see you. And God talked to Aaron and told Aaron to go. And before it's over with, Moses stands out there before Pharaoh. Moses stretches the rod out and the water turns to blood. Was it Moses that did it? It was the hand of God working with Moses. But God needed a man to fulfill his plan so that God could do what God wanted to do. Let me tell you, the greater part is not us. The greater part is him. But it's in God's plan to use a man. He wanted to turn Israel back to God, and so he needed a man that would pray. And when Elijah, when it's all done after three and a half years, Elijah's standing there at that altar that he's rebuilt. He begins to pray, essentially, God showed them that I've done all these things at your word. If that means everything from the beginning, then God moved on him to pray. Well, why didn't God just stop the heavens? God wanted a man to fit in his plan. God wanted a man to use to get the message to Israel. God wanted a man somehow as the focal point that he could use to stand up in Jezebel's presence or face, as it were, in Israel to say, there is a God. Yeah, he could have shut the heavens off. But he wanted a man to fit in with his plan. And he didn't shut the heavens off until the man said, yes. And the man began to pray. And God turned the spout off for three and a half years. And then later on, God sent fire down from heaven. And then God sent a cloud about like a man's hand. It, it's not all that big. That's enough. It's a coming. You tell Ahab, he better get a hurry over. He's going to get wet. Because a man fit in with the plan of God, God did a glorious work. God's been doing glorious things, and God's used some of you. And God's used some of you again and again, and he's not through. He's not through with Peoria. If the Lord tarries, there is more for Peoria. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. But God's plan includes the whole puzzle. And my mother, she... After dad went to Port Arthur, there came a time my mother got him in a Sunday school drive, and so they made a picture of the church. And they made it, somebody fixed it, it this big picture of car, thick cardboard, and made a puzzle out of it. And it fit on a frame. It was, it was a big thing. I don't know, maybe about like that. A picture of the church, and it, there were pieces of that puzzle. And when you take all those out, you've got that board without the pieces of the puzzle, and you don't see the picture of the church. And they mailed those little pieces of the puzzle out to people. Well, there were people that hadn't been to church in I don't know how long. There were people, maybe that was their church, but they didn't come. If they did, maybe Easter or something like, you know. And so they mailed those out, and, and people started coming and bringing their peace to the church, and they started putting it together, and and there were some they didn't make it. And so they sent people out to get the puzzle pieces from the people that wouldn't bring them. And I remember there was one or two they never found. They never got. I don't know what the, I don't know if the people just threw them away, whatever. But do you know what that picture looks like now? I say now. I don't know if it even still in existence. But what it looked like. You got the beautiful picture of the church. Except there's one or two spaces there that's missing. It's not complete. Lord, send whoever you work. Use the pastor. Use the pastor's wife. And Lord, use the song leader. And, and, and use Sister Dina. And, and just let me sit here and be a good saint. 
or at least just let me come and sit here. And there's a piece missing in God's plan because you're not saying yes to God. Or maybe you're saying yes in almost every category, but there's one room in your heart you just you can't totally yield that I don't know what'll happen. I, I just I don't know what he'll ask me to do. I don't know what the sacrifice is going to be, and I don't know. I just you may not even voice it, but down deep, it's I, I don't. I, I'm afraid what it'll cost me, and so I hadn't. And God wants you to yield it all. I was hesitant about telling this story because of it being broadcast. And if the sister hears it, then it's for the glory of God. But there was a sister, Sister Freeman told about her. I knew this young man in my youth. His dad and my dad were friends, both pastors. I preached for his dad later on. My brother was a friend to this young man. They got, he married this girl. And a beautiful young lady, and they had one or two children, and then they had a tragedy, and he got killed in a car wreck. And it left a fear in his wife. And so, I don't know how long this went on, maybe a few years, but she was at a conference where Sister Freeman was, and Sister Freeman was dealing with putting the things on the altar. I think it was maybe writing it on a piece of paper and, and putting it on the altar, and you're giving it to God, and and Sister Freeman just didn't feel released yet to close it. It was like she was feeling the Lord was dealing with somebody to give something to the Lord. So, and so this sister, she finally surrendered that fear, what it was to the Lord. Would you believe on the way home from that conference, I think the van she was driving got in a rainstorm and a vehicle started hydroplaning. And coming into her lane, no way to escape, maybe. And suddenly, she was bumping on the side of the road instead of in the highway. N not that she'd swerved over. It just suddenly, it was in a different place. And there was a motor home, I think, behind her that maybe crashed with the car or the vehicle and, and said later, where did you go? It sounds like when she surrendered that, that God took it, not only that fear, but God took the situation. And when it came, he miraculously just changed it. And I can be talking to somebody maybe today that you're struggling with something that you haven't yielded to God. You're afraid to be used of God for whatever reason. And that God is saying, come on, come on, believe me, trust me, come on. I've got a plan for you. I've got a work for you. I'm going to use your life for my glory, but I want you to be totally committed to me. I want you to be totally surrendered to me. There's difficulty that some of us can have in singing that song. Lord, Jesus, be Lord of all the kingdoms. When you get to the next part, I surrender all the kingdoms of my heart. Oh, there's a difference. Lord, be Lord of all. But when you say, I, you see there's something in the brain that has difficulty saying it if you don't mean it in the heart. And so you just can't voice that. It's just because down inside, deep inside, you know it's, it's, not, it's not surrendered. It's just not yielded. It's not obeying. I don't even know what all I'm maybe trying to preach about that's here today, but hopefully you're understanding what God's trying to tell you. I am the voice of a confirmation that God is speaking to some people in this congregation and that God is offering you the opportunity of something glorious if you'll step up and say yes to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. Struggling, arguing with the Almighty. One day a young man by the name of Stephen is brought before some accusers and boy he witnesses and he begins to preach under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And he reaches all the way back in the Old Testament and he's laying the foundation 
and he's bringing it home. And there are people there that are struggling against truth. And there's one young man standing over to the side, and he's hearing this man, Stephen. He's named Saul. He's very educated in the law. He's very strict educated. And he's a strong believer in the law and in the God of Israel. And he's listening to Stephen. Now, I don't know that it happened like this, but I don't know that it didn't. There was something there that he remembered because he talked about it later on. But can you imagine as he's talking or as Stephen is talking and Saul is listening and Saul is just, no, 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 no. And, he's, and, and God's looking at Saul and saying, young man, I've got a plan for you. I've got a will for you. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. You're going to stand before priests or rather before kings. You're going to stand before rulers. You're going to carry the gospel to the Gentiles. You're going, to, you're going to be beaten. You're going to suffer persecution for my name's sake. I'm going to use you. You're going to write approximately half of a New Testament that people in Peoria, Illinois are going to be able to read about. I'm going to give you revelation. Not me. Mm -mm. I, I'm not going to believe this. In fact, he stood there and they laid the clothes at his feet. He's standing there in judgment, and he's arguing against this and fighting against this. And, and I, I don't know what all's going on, but I do know this, that when the Lord talked to him later on, he said, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. If I can turn that around a bit and, and, and kind of back up from that, you've been kicking against the pricks. You've been struggling against the call of God. You've been struggling against the will of God. You've been, you've been fighting with the Almighty. You've been arguing with the Creator. It just, no, I'm not going to accept it. He's got letters in his pocket, and he's just breathing out threatening. And all, I don't know what's going on in his life all this time, but I do know when God had enough and God said, all right, you won't listen to any other way, here goes, pow. Down to the ground he went, blinded. Great light shining, just blinded. And a voice says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he didn't say. Now he knew who Jehovah was. In the Old Testament, you're talking about Jehovah our Elohim is one. The Lord our God is one. Uh, he didn't say, how am I persecuting you? He said, who are you, Jehovah? Huh. <laughs> I got to know. And Jehovah said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. He didn't take six months to work over the problem. Immediately. Jehovah, what would you have me to do? Is there somebody here that you've been struggling against the will of God? You've been having difficulty accepting the will of God. You've been having difficulty feeling worthy. You've been having difficulty feeling, not, I messed up too bad, Lord. You see back there, I tried there in Egypt and I made a mess of things. And ah, I don't, I, I can't go back. Yeah, I got a plan for you, Moses. That's, that's behind you. We're going to do it different this time. You're going to be in my plan. You're going to be in my will. You're going to do it for me, and I'm going to work through you, and I'm going to do something that's going to give God glory, and I'm going to do it through your life, and I'm going to use you for the kingdom's sake. And when it's all done, you'll be able to say, look what God hath wrought. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I had a dream before it came. Uh, I was going to leave on a Thursday morning, drive up, see some of my grandkids that my son moved up to Missouri. So I couldn't get with them in Texas anymore like I used to could. And uh, grandkids are important in case you don't know it. And pastor, you're going to have to just share yours with me. These are my grandkids. And... Uh, I have some there in 
Springville area, so I was going to drive up and be with them, you know, a little bit, and then I was going to come up and be with another one in St. Louis area, and so I wanted to get an early start. For me, it was early, 7 o'clock. I was, had thought at least, and then by the time I finally was going to get to sleep, I set my clock for 7 instead. Well, my, I said clock, it's my watch alarm, and it's ringing now, but they'll have to wait. And just So... It woke me up, and I cut it off. Well, there's two ways you can cut it off. Sometimes you can put it on snooze, or you can put it on stop. I put it on stop and laid there and went back to sleep. About an hour later, I woke up, but I'd had a dream. And I thought about that dream that this is not the first time this has happened. Because it has happened before that somewhere where I was going to be in service, God gave me a dream about a situation. And so in this dream, I saw this lady, very strong-willed and in need. And in her situation, there were others around that were being affected uncomfortably. And she just, she was strong-minded about the way she wanted it to be. And I'm trying to say this nicely. And uh, I was wanting to help her. And so I feel that there's someone here that has been struggling with something and God wants something good for you. And you may not have realized that you've really been struggling against what has been the will of God for glory. But that if you will submit to authority and if you'll say yes, you may have had the Holy Ghost a long time, but if you'll say yes to God's plan, not only will God bless you spiritually, but that that you're afraid of physically, that when you go to the doctor and he runs the test, because this is what I heard the doctor say. It was these words or words of this effect. He was willing to run the test, but it won't be there. Now, I don't know who you are. But you may, have been, you may have been seeking God to help you for some time. And I'm a voice of confirmation that if you're here, God sees your need. And if you'll do the will of God, God is going to work a miraculous change in your life. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Struggling with the Almighty. Arguing with the Creator. No, it's not me, Lord. This can go both ways. This can be somebody, Lord, not me. I'm not going to preach. I, I've told this story here before. My dad, he, he didn't want to be a preacher. Not him. He just wanted to be a good saint in the church. He didn't want to preach. And, and that day when we went to the woods to get the axe that we'd left, and I was just a little guy about five years old, and the pickup door, I went to sleep, and the pickup door came open, and I fell out. And it was one of those East Texas roads with ruts in a sandy hill that the banks are high. And, and there was nowhere for him to move with that pickup. Just give that steering wheel a jerk to make the back end swing around so we wouldn't run over his little boy. And when I fell out, I hit the sand, and I had sand in my eyes. And I was afraid of my dad running off and leaving me, and I'm jumping up and running, crying, and crying. That dad gets out of that pickup and he sees that little boy of his coming. I remember dad, as he stooped down there, took his handkerchief, he wiping the sand out. But, you know, I didn't know till years later that he was saying, yes, God, I'll preach. Yes, God, I'll preach. Hallelujah. And he obeyed the voice of the Lord. And through his ministry, I do not know how many thousands upon thousands have been affected. He had angels more than once bring messages to him directly to him 
I know of at least three or four times that he had an angelic visitation. And I know of at least three times he had verbal communication from an angel. No, Lord, not me. I, not me. Yeah, I got a plan for you. If you'll, if you'll fit in it, then I will work through you and I will do glorious things for the kingdom's sake through your obedience. I don't know where you fit in with this. I don't know where you are in the confirmation, but somebody here needs to say yes to God today. Somebody here needs to say, Lord, I submit to my pastor's authority or I submit to the will of God. Or whatever it is, somebody here needs to obey what God's been dealing with you about sometimes for ever so long so you can see the fulfillment of the glory of God that he has planned for so long also. I'm asking for everybody here to come. And when you come to this altar, I want you to come and pray and say, yes to God. Yes to God. Hallelujah. I want us to come and pray. Lord, I'm not my own, but I belong to you. I will obey your voice. I will obey your call. And I will say, me, Lord, I want you to use me. I want you to use me like you want me to. And God, the things that I need to change in my life or in my relationship I'm going to change it. If you're here and you don't have the Holy Ghost or you need to be renewed in the Holy Ghost, please come and join in with us and watch what God does. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's pray, church. Oh, God, we need you. We need your leading. We need your direction. God, we need you to help us to be what you have called us to be. We need you to help us, Lord, to perform the task that you've laid before us. We can't do it by ourselves. We are incapable in ourselves alone. We need your anointing and your inspiration and your empowering. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Tell the Lord yes. Lay that on the altar you've been struggling with. Go ahead and give it up. Lord, I'm surrendering this reluctance to you. I'm surrendering this lack of faith to you. I'm surrendering my fear to you. I'm surrendering my stubbornness to you, Lord. Not mine, but thy will be done. Hold me. Make me. After thy will, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 To you. It's everything I give. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus name. feel that sometimes we just need help to get over the hump. It's just the, the struggle. Somehow we need help to break through. I don't want you to ask your neighbor what they need. God knows what they need. But I want you to allow God use you to pray in the Holy Ghost for them. The Holy Ghost knows what they need. And I'd like for you to find a neighbor a brother and a brother, a sister and a sister. I, I don't want to make it a line. I want you to pray individually. At the most, maybe three or four, praying for one another. And if you're in that kind of situation, I want you to pray individually for every one of those and let the Holy Ghost pray with you for their need. If I'm right, there's some folks here that you need to surrender something that you've held back from God. You may be a godly person and so many ways and been such a blessing and yet there's a room there that you've not surrendered to the Lord. You need to say yes to God today. God has a plan for you. Would you be willing to turn to your neighbor and ask them, would you pray with me? Would you find someone right now and, and would you pray for one another 
and would you really touch God? You'll never know in this life, maybe, how God used you today to pray for a brother or a sister. God, lay your hand on my brother's life, on my sister's life. And God, whatever it is you want to do in their life, would you work this out for them? And would you change the course like you're wanting to? And God, would you bring forth in righteousness that work that you're desiring to do in their life and in their heart? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, yes, amen. Go ahead. Put it on the altar. God, I'm giving it to you. Hallelujah. The Lord is God. Hallelujah. 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 In the lovely name of Jesus. In the lovely name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallowed be your name, Lord. Hallowed be your name, Lord. Hallowed be your name, Lord. Hallowed be your Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel something's lifting. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. thank the Lord for what he's doing we owe it to him Lord thank you for working in our hearts 
Thank you, Lord, for kneeling with us and assuring us. Thank you, Lord, for your great love that you love us. Lord, your compassion and your mercy. Thank you for not giving up on us, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the call of God, the will of God. Praise the Lord. How many are here today? You need you need prayer for healing. Would you raise your hand? Just hold your hands up if you would. Let me see how many we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, if you'll just step back just a little bit, I'd like for you to come. The ladies on my left, the brethren on my right. I want you to understand who does this, okay? In the Old Testament, the book of Exodus, the Lord said, if you will, it's like if you will fervently seek my way, essentially if you'll do my will, live for me, I'll set none of these diseases on you. Those that were on the Egyptians. He said, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. The blind man called Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And a messenger took him the message. He calleth thee. The messenger just brought the message. But the message was, he calleth thee. Jesus healeth thee. Jesus calleth thee. Jesus empowereth thee. Hallelujah. Jesus commissions thee. Understand who the one is that's the healer and the miracle worker. Jesus saves you. So it's to Jesus we need to go. The Bible said you are not come to the mount, that mount that burns with fire and quake, such a fearful sight, the knees smoke together in fear. You're come to the company of the house of the Lord, the hearts of just men made perfect. You're in the presence of people God has put his spirit in, the same spirit that's the spirit of Jesus that healeth thee. So I want you to do this. I want you to, ladies, place your hand on the shoulders of these ladies that need prayer. We're going to do this to start with. And I want you to pray the prayer of faith and speak to that condition in Jesus' name that the Lord heal it. And let the Holy Ghost that's in you operate. And let God do the healing. Randall McCoy is not the healer. God's the healer. I've seen God use me in situations, if I could say that, forgive me if need be, but it's God that does the healing. It's Jesus that healeth thee. And I want you, brethren, lay your hand on these brethren and pray the prayer of faith and command that situation to change in the name of Jesus. You take authority over it in Jesus' name. So when you do that, you just put your hand in the glove of the hand of the Lord, the Lord granting, and you place the Lord's hand on that. In Jesus' name, that affliction be bound and completely change. And let's see what God does. Are you willing? This is not glorifying anybody any wrong way, hopefully. This is giving God the glory to work through us. This in no way puts anybody in a position to take authority over pastoral direction. This doesn't give anybody the authority to come back and say, Pastor. Your love surrounds us.
How many of you feel God touched you today? You feel God touched you. How many of you, you can tell it's not changed yet? Would you raise your hand? It hasn't changed yet. Would you come right here? Praise the Lord. How many of you, Lord, I need a spiritual blessing. Or it's been so long and I just need a in the Holy Ghost. It's been too long. Lord, you're wanting to do something for me and I'm having difficulty receiving it and I just want a good breakthrough. We all need that sometimes. I, at least I do. Or have. At least. Anybody, would you raise your hand? I fit one of those categories. Oh, there's more than that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't be shy about receiving the blessing of the Lord. God's got good for us. I want you to come and stand at the front also, if you would, and let's worship God together. Let's see what more God will do for us, all right? Praise the Lord.
Would you just worship the Lord together?